Hello everyone, and welcome to the first episode of Fiction Dive. The title's a bit up in the air right now, so you guys can let me know what you think in the comments. So, I have a bit of a strange opinion on Dune. I'm not really a big fan. I'm not saying the films weren't good, that the CGI wasn't amazing, and the characters weren't interesting most of the time. All I'm saying is, I'm kinda disappointed I didn't find the story as deep or groundbreaking as I'd hoped. But you know what? That's okay because I found something in these films that is. The ideas and designs of just about everything in the world a story takes place in. The world of Dune is very different from the conventional idea of science fiction that we're familiar with. There are similarities, of course, but a lot of the iconography associated with sci-fi isn't present, and because of that the films feel very refreshing. These films, being as faithful as they are to the source material, lend themselves to the unique aesthetic of the books. This makes me think that, when I was watching the films, they gave me some semblance of the feeling I imagine people probably had back in the day reading Dune when it first came out, and I highly commend director Denise Villeneuve for this. I also commend him for putting together some of the best sci-fi imagery I've ever seen. So to start with, there's the Ornithopters. One of the things I vividly remember back in 2021 after seeing Dune Part 1 was this shot. Seeing what looked like a space helicopter that had wings resembling a dragonfly made me think to myself, this film has something no other sci-fi film does. To me, the ornithopters are one of the best sci-fi vehicles to ever be put to film. The idea of an aircraft that resembles an insect is one of the most unique and cool ideas for sci-fi, and it's the go-to example whenever I think about what separates the world of Dune from other sci-fi films. I'm sure it's been done before, but I've never seen it done quite like it is here. If vehicle designs matter in any genre of film, it matters in sci-fi the absolute most. For one thing, it's not like other films where there's already vehicles designed that fit the setting, like cars or stagecoaches. It's also much harder to have physical vehicles for sci-fi films, which is why sci-fi is one of the most CGI-heavy genres. The carryalls are another one of my favorite designs. I've never seen a sci-fi movie that had hot air balloons, which is another indication of Dune's iconic look. The spice harvesters are cool too, and they remind me a lot of the sand crawlers in Star Wars. One scene I like that gives the vehicles an interesting role is near the beginning of part one, when Paul is talking with Duncan Idaho, played by Jason Momoa. Duncan arrives at this hangar in some aircraft, and as he disembarks we see him wearing what looks like the kind of pilot outfit Maverick from Top Gun might have worn had he been born sometime around the year 10,191. As he talks with Paul, he does some inspections on his vehicle and calls out for his technician's assistance. This scene shows the relationship the characters have to their vehicles in a way that would be pretty standard in most films, but to me, because the vehicles are so well designed and have a real sense of tangibility, owing to the great practical effects in CGI, it makes this one of my favorite scenes in part one. I also like the idea that, being that this film takes place thousands of years in the future, this scene plays out pretty similarly to most other guys talking while inspecting big machinery scenes, showing that perhaps human beings haven't changed as much as we'd think. Not a particularly unique idea, I know, but it's a little detail I liked. So, the Atreides obviously have to be mentioned at some point, and let me just say, the design of all the Atreides architecture and clothing lends itself to the otherworldly, yet somewhat familiar nature of Dune. Many building interiors clearly have a medieval and 17th century inspiration to them, with wooden surfaces, walls with wooden and stone carvings on them, windows with decorative grills, banners flying everywhere, oil paintings, and a bullhead. This look is consistent with Atreides' clothing and armor as well. I mean, if you were to ask me what a knight in space would look like, I'd probably imagine something like this. And of course, the Atreides family aren't shy about flexing the drip with Paul and Leto sporting very fashionable trench coats. Of course, there's the ceremonial attire which conjures up images of a certain French general, and Lady Jessica's dresses are all fitting with the other characters' looks as well. Until they get to Arrakis, where her wardrobe seems to have, uh, gone up a few digits. This alludes to how her character becomes more important and revered throughout the story when they get to Arrakis. Speaking of Arrakis, there's a big stylistic change that happens when the Atreides arrive there. Up until this point, the lighting and colors in the shots have been dulled and darkened, except for Paul's dream sequences, of course. This changes to a far brighter palette on Arrakis, obviously because the planet is much brighter, and along with it comes a change in the style of architecture for the main city they arrive at. 
This style of architecture is far more minimalist, which is a staple of sci-fi. There are also some interior elements in the palace reminiscent of Middle Eastern architecture and decor. Sandstone colored walls and floors, golden wall carvings, ornately designed rugs, and of course, the outfits of the inhabitants of the city are reminiscent of traditional Middle Eastern attire. So now we move on to the Harkonnen, whose imagery is far more prevalent in part two. And no, I'm not talking about Christopher Walken. These guys basically stole the look of the Borg from Star Trek. Or more likely the Borg stole their look from the books, and now it's come full circle as they steal their look back. The dark lighting and mechanical look of everything, their pale skin and black uniforms, it all tells me these guys are basically cousins. I looked up to see if the Borg were at all inspired by the Harkonnen because I thought it would have been an obvious comparison, but apparently, as of the time I'm recording this, it's not really something people are talking about. I did find this thread on Reddit where someone points out the similarities between the Harkonnen and the Strangers from Dark City, so I recommend you read that if you're interested to learn more about sci-fi films that are potentially inspired by the Dune aesthetic. And with that, it's about time for me to wrap up this video. I do hope you all enjoyed this first episode of Fiction Dive. Again, open to title suggestions. I've been wanting to do some interesting content for a while now, and hopefully I'll have more time soon to focus on doing these video essays on stuff I like in film and other media like video games and really anything that piques my interest. I'll also be able to focus on making short films again soon. Just for the time being, I'm pretty busy. Just know that there's content on the way, so if you don't want to miss it, be sure to subscribe. Anyway, thanks for watching.